Now, a, a lot of people who claim to be quote unquote red pill, especially nowadays, are very much like the religious leaders that existed in Jesus' day. You know, you have the, the, the red pill, the going monk, you know, whatever other, other acronym, you know, that many of these different male groups utilize. And they're really just virtue signalers. And even though the quote unquote right, you know, sits here and talks about how, you know, the left is virtue signaling, everybody is doing it. And this isn't something new. This was actually something that happened in Jesus' day. And so we're going to look actually at a scripture in the Bible and showcase how that exact same thing is happening today. Now, this is from the book of John, chapter 8. And this is after Jesus had given a sermon. And of course, the people who were, you know, he's talking about morality. And then you had the religious leaders, right? In essence, the gatekeepers of society. They really didn't like that he was, that Jesus was basically exposing them. And so they came to him and they were like, we're going to, you know, we're going to trap him in some sort of logical fallacy. And so in John chapter 2, it says, early in the morning, he went back into the temple courts and all the people came to him. Right? They didn't like that. Right? Think about it. If you're a, a red pill gatekeeper and now someone else is starting to attract attention, right? And they're taking away your quote unquote business. And this is basically what how they viewed it. They're basically losing their power to this individual because he was opening the eyes of the people. And so it goes on to state all the people came to him and he sat down to teach them. And then the scripture goes on to say, and the scribes and the and the Pharisees, however, brought to him a woman caught in adultery, right? Now, this is where you have many of your, you know, the, the no hymen, no diamond people. They like to call women 304s and prostitutes, and they refer negatively, right? They, they call them slurs. They have all these different sort of uh, slurs for these individuals. And it goes on to say, and it says they, and they made him stand, they made her stand before them. And this is what you see a lot of these red pillars do. They'll take this woman and they'll bring them before you, right? They'll have an example. And I've seen a lot of this with a lot of these content creators, where they'll take the existence of this one woman who did this one thing, right? There's been like that black woman who um, was mistreating, I mean, he looked like he was like Indian, guy who took her out on a date and then she was late and she didn't show up on time. So he took her to another restaurant, you know, to quote unquote punish her. Um, because they lost their reservation, right? And of course, everybody's talking about how, you know, she's ugly, you know, she's this and she's that. And they're, they're in essence, doing what the Pharisees did, right? They're making her stand before you. And if you're not red pill, they, and this is what they want, this is what the virtue signal is. How red pill are you, right? This is what virtue signaling, this is what virtue signaling is. And so they said to Jesus, they said, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, in the law of Moses, command us to stone such a woman. What do you say? And so nowadays, if you plead the plight of the woman, the men will say, oh, you're simping. You're simping, right? This is what they're doing. They're virtue signaling. How red pill are you? Show us how red pill you are, Jesus. According to the law of Moses, this woman committed adultery. She should be stoned to death. And so Jesus understood what they were doing. And so he went on to say, they said, to, they said this to test him in order to have a basis for accusing him, right? I know you're, I know you're a blue-pilled simp, and I'm going to show it, and I'm going to show it right now. He's going to cuck for this woman. And this is exactly what they did. And so he straight up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to cast a stone at her. And so he gave them what they wanted. He said, hey. You want to go out there and stone a girl right ahead. The guy that has not committed an act of sin, you can be the one that can lift up your stone and hurl it at that woman and put her to death. And of course, the result was when they heard this, they began to go away one by one, beginning with the older ones until only Jesus was left. Right? The old men were there, right? The real, the real old red pillars. They were the ones, right? They were the first ones to go. Because they knew that they were wrong. They knew that they themselves were sinners. And so even though they were virtue signaling to Jesus, well, we're going to see how red pill you are because we know you're blue pill. We know you're going to cut for this woman. And so in, in, instead of promoting morality, and again, in this scenario, 
And this is what you often see with a lot of people who quote, claim to be red pill, monk, going their own way, you know, whatever other acronym that they've adopted. Often they talk about the woman. And this is what these men were doing, right? They brought this woman before her, we expose her. But where was the man that committed adultery with her? The man who had made the obligation to be faithful to his wife under the law that was equally worthy of being stoned. Where was that man? Do you notice the scripture doesn't say that they also brought the man to be stoned as well? Who did they bring? They brought the woman. Because this is, and this is what you see. Often, many of these individuals say, well, you know, Chad is going to be Chad, right? Tyrone is going to be Tyrone. All the women are just given away, and so the men are just going to take it. And this is what gets promoted. This is sort of, this sort of virtue signaling gets promoted, and it gets promoted on both sides. This is by no means something that is exclusive on the left, but this is something that is very much you've seen on the right. And this is what a lot of these men do. A lot of these men who today, who are your scribes and who are your, Phar who are your Pharisees, who are in essence your religious leaders among the red pill, among the monk community, among the men going their own way, among the manosphere, right? These are your... Uh, these are your scribes and your Pharisees. They are your religious leaders. They are your teachers. And so they constantly bombard you with all of these women and what all these women are doing and all the terrible things that they're doing. And they're bringing you before her so that you can virtually stone her. And of course, if you say anything to the contrary, well, then you're a cuck. You're a blue-pilled simp. You're a beta. Not realizing the fact that it, it, it's the man that created the scenario, Right? The woman in this scenario more than likely impoverished. And so instead of pro helping provide for her, instead of the men taking this woman and making her a wife, instead of leaving her to prostitution, again, supply and demand is an economy. Before there is a supply, there is a demand. Had this man remained moral and had the men remained moral, there would be no prostitute. There would be no temple prostitute for this woman to, in essence, take that job, right? And so the men are the ones that create the desire. The men are the ones that are creating the system, and then the women are adapting to the system because they're not taking their women as wives. This woman was not taken as a wife. Instead, she was taken as a prostitute. And then, of course, the men turn around. This is what you see a lot of these, quote-unquote, men who are red pill. A lot of them really just want to partake. They want to partake in the prostitution, Many of them don't want to be husbands, they don't want to be fathers, although they might be single fathers, or they might have abandoned their family in one shape or another, and then they go out there and then they virtue signal to you about, look at these whores, look at this prostitute, we're going to bring her before you, and we want you to virtually stone her, call her a whore, call her a slut, right? And it's just this continued divide between peoples between societies between men and women and of course the children grow up in these systems and the cycle continues and so of course jesus helped people to show that yes while this woman was wrong and was committing on and breaking the, the law of moses but really he was helping them to see their own influence or their their own sinning They're, they were the ones that were equally partaking Right? There was no, no one brought the man. What happened to the man? What happened to the husband in that scenario that was committing adultery against his wife? Who could equally, who could equally bring grounds against him for him to be stoned? That man is nowhere here, is not here to be spoken of. And this is exactly the sort of environment that we grew up into, that we grow up in today. We grew up in an environment where the men will make excuses for each other. A oh, high value man, he can't be expected to be faithful. What do you mean? He's, uh, desired he's high up on the totem pole and of course this is what people overwhelmingly meant and it's because they equally want to be sharers there was like this clip not too long ago where like uh fresh and fit and they were like on a panel and it was like how many of you men want to have multiple girlfriends or multiple wives and like over half of all the men raised their hands did you think that those men wanted multiple wives or do you think that they just wanted to sleep with all of these women in essence making them prostitutes so that they can then put these men oh look at these whores they're giving it up on the first date again let he who is without sin cast the first stone anyway i'm going to leave it there thanks for watching feel free to leave your comment below and i'll check you next time